The winter blockbuster season is upon us, and I certainly had to let the entire world know about my love for Miss Katniss Everdeen. Turns out, though, that my tweets, Instagram photos, and Facebook notes are valuable for more than just torturing my followers. According to data provided by Adobe Digital Index, profitable movies receive 20% more positive social media reactions than movies that don't turn a profit. The science of measuring online buzz is becoming more and more crucial to predicting success in films and beyond. As we come into the holiday season here, we've got a very crowded landscape at the box office. Um, you see films like, like Anchorman 2 getting a ton of conversation because of all of the marketing efforts that, that, that Will Ferrell and team have done around that film. Stacey, are we moving past this sort of traditional idea of marketing and advertising as being one sort of exclusive exclusive thing and embracing social media sort of across across platform as being something that can really drive people to buy tickets, can drive people to buy products in a way that we haven't before? I think so. I think marketing has become much more all-inclusive. Um, I think Anchorman 2 is a great example. They've had such an interesting marketing campaign. Um, they've had Dodge, they've had Ron Burgundy, the character that Will Ferrell plays, do commercials for Dodge Durango and even take over the name of a communication school <laughs> and uh, all kinds of interesting uh, ideas. And they've used this, I think, to a lot of those videos have gone viral. So yes, there's a traditional ad there for Dodge Durango, but then the ad also goes viral and becomes a social phenomenon as well. And I think you're right. I think the lines are starting to blur. I think there's not quite a distinction that maybe there used to be between social advertising and straight up movie advertising. I think they're trying to often make ads that will go viral or aspects of ads that will go viral or get people to participate on Facebook, quizzes, which character would you be, things like that. And I think a lot of, they're starting to become really successful and really smart. I think Anchorman 2 is a great example of that. Anchorman 2 is a phenomenal example of that. And how much of that is consumer driven? Because when you think about the the things that we talked about are the things that went viral with something like Anchorman 2. It was him taking over a newscast in, you know, North Dakota or wherever it was. It wasn't straight up what we think about as traditional promotion. It was not a press junket. It's not being talked to. It's not being, you know, us being, you know, the consumers of something that we feel as though we're being directly sold. It's entertaining in such a different way. And are we going to see more films and more businesses move toward that model and is that kind of a scary thing when you really boil it down that we're going to be just advertised to in so many different sorts of ways? Well, I think in certain ways, Anchorman 2 is a kind of a unique example of this because Ron Burgundy is Ron Burgundy. Um, I think those videos are more apt to go viral than a, a I think it would be harder for a serious movie, for a drama, for instance, to do some of the viral things that Anchorman 2 is able to do. So I think Anchorman 2 is a really good example of this because of the kind of movie it is and because of the kind of character that Ron Burgundy is. But I think you're right. We're absolutely going to start seeing a lot more examples of this um, coming up on social media, a lot more things that try to engage us personally and get us to share and get us to involve our friends and things like that. And I think examples of, I've been seeing a lot of which character are you for things like Game of Thrones. I think things like that are able to garner that um, that, that social buzz for a drama. But Anchorman 2, I think, is a, a perfect example of this because it's so perfectly positioned for, for going viral.